We have a very special guest today. He writes about Ukraine for the Financial Times and has reported from Ukraine since 2010 and was previously a world and national security reporter for Politico and a correspondent for BuzzFeed News. He's an author just as well. He wrote the book, The War Came to Us, Life and Death in Ukraine. He joined the Financial Times in October 2022 and today Christopher Miller joins us at UATV Studio in Kiev of Ukraine. Hello, Chris. Hello. Thank you for having me. How are you today? Yeah, doing all right, I would say. Um, you know, it's uh, another busy news day as has been for the last more than a year now in Ukraine. More than a year in Ukraine? Well, I mean, you since the full-scale war began, I just right. mean it's been a busy, a busy news day every day since February 24th of uh, 2022. American journalist and reporter, why Ukraine? Well, I first came to Ukraine, as you mentioned, in, in, in 2010, first as a United States Peace Corps volunteer. Um, this is a U.S. program that sends volunteers abroad to help developing nations. And I was part of a group of more than 70 American volunteers right. who was sent here to Ukraine. My, uh, the place where I lived when I first arrived was in eastern Ukraine, uh, a city called Artyomovsk at the time, now called Bakhmut. So I spent two years living and working there as a teacher, as an educator, a volunteer in the community, and living as one of the um, uh, more than 70,000 other residents in Bakhmut for two years. Who would ever know that? Uh, who could ever imagine that the Bakhmut will become the city that everyone knows in the world? Yeah, there you was. You lived there for two years. I did, I did, and certainly there was no sense that, at the, at that time, it would ever be the frontline city that mm. it had become. That it would have the fate that uh, we've all come to know, um, being completely destroyed by Russian forces since uh, or, or in, in May. Have you ever been to Russia before the war? I have been to Russia. I've been to um, Moscow, St. Petersburg, a couple of cities outside of Moscow region a few times. I think three, three visits to Russia. I've spent uh, some time there as a reporter and uh, it, was, it was fine for a reporting trip. Um, I much preferred to live and work in Ukraine where I think, you know, for, for a lot of correspondents who've spent a significant amount of time here like I have, one of the reasons we like working here and reporting here is the access. We have great access to a lot of government figures, people in the presidential administration. People are very open and willing to talk to us. That's not necessarily the case in Russia. You, you mean journalist? Yeah, yeah, me as a journalist, as a foreigner. Um, you know, before uh, Russia's war began in 2014, even right. people were still very interested in the West and wanting to know what life outside of Ukraine was like after 2014. I think that interest only increased, especially as the internet became widely available and fast and a new generation of Ukrainians grew up and became adults and uh, young working adults. Right. Um, you know, certainly they took a great interest in um, the outside world and economy. And then, of course, Ukraine became uh, a country on the front pages after Russia's um, forced annexation of Crimea and the um, covert invasion in the Donbass. And mm. certainly now after February 2022. While being in Russia and then living in Ukraine, any differences, discrepancies in mentality spotted? Well, as I mentioned, I think, you know, one thing, and, and again, my, my time spent in Russia was as a, as a journalist. Uh, I didn't live there. I was there temporarily for a couple of months at a time. Just to come and go. Yes, just to come and go. And, and really only those uh, three times that I mentioned, you know, it was a difficult place to report from. As I said, access is very difficult. You put in all of these requests for interviews. And of course, nobody in the government of Russia really wants to sit down with a Western correspondent and answer difficult questions. Obviously, they don't handle criticism very well. Uh, people are very, ordinary Russians, that is, are very skeptical of Western correspondents. Why? It's the opposite here in Ukraine. Maybe well, just, I think, just let's speculate. Why? Sure, sure. I think, you know, uh, the, the population of Russia is spoon-fed propaganda, um, and it has been for years, um, you know, 20 years, arguably, under uh, the rule of Vladimir Putin. And so they have built up this idea that people in the West are after them, that we are the enemy, and Western correspondents only want to write negatively and critically of mm -hmm. Russia. Now, obviously, we do write critically of, of Russia, but there are... Uh, there are obvious reasons of that. For that, thank you. Um, your book. Talk us briefly through the plot, will you? Sure. Yeah. So you know, uh, the book is essentially 
uh, my journey, 13 years in Ukraine, in parallel with the journey of Ukraine and Ukrainians through what has been uh, arguably the most, uh, I think, influential moment and most monumentous um, uh, period in Ukraine's modern history. There's been, um, you know, I mean, the book begins in the Yanukovych era uh, when I arrived in 2010, just a couple of months after he took office. Um, it takes you through the revolution, the invasion and annexation of Crimea, the war in 2014, onward to the full-scale invasion. So it really covers what is a broad period of time, but also I think the period of time here in Ukraine that has really shaped the country and its people. In your book, as a writer, or in your articles as a journalist, did you ever dare to touch a theme of a criminal clumsiness of the collective West, its unwillingness to make decisions in extreme situations and its inability to change obsolete, rigid, hopelessly outdated safety structures, such as, for example, the one that allowed the terrorist country Russia to overtake the presidency of the UN Security Council? I think as a journalist, you know, we all handle difficult stories. Um, certainly myself working for major Western media outlets, um, you know, my, my job as long as well as the job of my colleagues is to ask difficult questions of people in power, not only in the countries where we work as foreign correspondents in Ukraine, but also of the governments that are influencing this country, supporting this country, uh, or at times critical of this country. So, uh, you know, I think to answer your question broadly, yes, I've, I've certainly done uh, some challenging reporting um, that challenges, I think, you know, Western narratives, right. um, but but also, um, uh, you know, asks difficult questions of of our governments, mine in particular being the United States, um, because as a journalist, of course, I report the story, but this is a place I care deeply about. And I think asking those hard questions of my own government in their support can ultimately benefit Ukraine. I love the cover of the book. Can you tell us more about about the, the photo that is mine? Yeah, of course. Um, besides it being you know, a very striking image of a, uh, a shrapnel-torn Ukrainian flag, it's uh, a photograph that was made in the Battle of Ilovaisk in 2014 by my late friend uh, Maxim Levin. Um, Max was killed by Russian soldiers early in the full-scale invasion. And I, when, when my publishers and I were discussing what we wanted on the cover of the book, I told them that it was important for me to have an image that was made by a Ukrainian photographer who I had uh, been friends with and, and worked with in the past. And so we went through a list of, of photographers and photos. And ultimately, I said, you know, if we can find something in Max Levin's portfolio, I would really like to use that photo. And so this is the one that we came up with and decided on. And I'm, I'm very pleased with it. And, you know, as we sit here and speak about him today, it's actually Max's birthday. Um, uh, yeah. So the war in Ukraine, obviously, is a personal thing for you. When did it become personal? It is personal for me, as it is for, you know, millions and millions of Ukrainians. Me not being a Ukrainian and as an American, it, it, you know, I think it's, it's different in... in in a large sense, um, because while it certainly has impacted me and it's it's emotional for me, um, you know, I, I can never truly understand what it feels like to be somebody who uh, a country once exterminated, right? But you know, the country of Ukraine became deeply personal to me not long after I moved here. It was a very intimate, um, very um, hands-on. Um, heavy assignment to take, being a Peace Corps volunteer in Bakhmut back mm. in 2010. And I became very close friends with several Ukrainians um, who I'm still very close with. And I have watched them grow up and get married, have children, um, make families and uh, develop. And they've done the same in watching me and my career, career progress. And when the full scale invasion happened, um, you know, I, unfortunately, many of them had to flee and, and now they're spread all over Ukraine and, and even Europe. I mean, so to go back to answer your questions, when, when did it become personal? I think I think within the first weeks and, and, and months of me being in the country 13 years ago, it became it became personal, um, maybe more so when at the end of my two years in in Bakhmut, I decided to stay. And that's when I really felt like this had become my adopted second home. 
What's next? Where are you going to? I know that you are leaving Kiev on Sunday. Where are you going to? Where are you headed? Well, I'm, I'm likely just going down to southern Zaporizhia Oblast to check out what's happening on the ground there, speak to some of the uh, Ukrainian soldiers about the counteroffensive. Uh, I'm not going anywhere uh, for the time being. Uh, you know, the story, uh, the biggest story in the world is, is right here in Ukraine. Absolutely. The, the fate of Ukraine is something that everybody in the West, I, uh, you know, for whom I write, is, is paying very close attention to and, and is very important. So I'll, I'll be here um, for the foreseeable future and I'll continue to uh, you know, publish stories at the Financial Times and uh, talk to people about, uh, about my book. Thank you very much for what you do from the bottom of my heart and from the bottom of the Ukrainian nation, I believe, just as well. Keep on doing that on the, from the bottom of my heart and from the bottom of the Ukrainian nation. You are doing a great job. I wish you luck and health. Hope to see you soon in Kiev in our studio. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much. That was all, folks.